everybody, it's Pam at the Paper Outpost. Hey, here, and guess what? Today is Craft Chat. That's exciting, but even more exciting, this is going to be the biggest giveaway I have given to date as far as number of giveaways. And today, the number of scrap giveaways is going to total not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven winners. We are going to pull seven winners and that will complete my massive scrap giveaway contest. So we're gonna go ahead and start and uh, do these right from the get-go. So if you are a junk journal maker or a paper crafter of any sort, all you had to do was post a comment in last Friday's video for Craft Chat. And uh, then from that pool of comments, I'm gonna pull these. So there are, I think, 430 comments, something like that. So these are better odds than the lottery. Ready? Here we go. Let's see who the winners are. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna write down the names too. Do. All right, here we go. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Zenobia Foxclaw. Hey, what a cool name. Zenobia Foxclaw. Congratulations. You are number one. Okay. Oh, she says, I've tried several times to sign up for your newsletter, but the program that takes subscribers doesn't believe my email is valid. Um, okay, I will uh, connect with you on that. So remember, if you win the scrappy contest today, please email me the mailing address to which you would like the scraps mailed to. Uh, my email address is pam at thepaperoutpost.com. Pam at thepaperoutpost.com. And you have six days to notify me. That's right. Okay, so I've decided, yeah, I've changed it to six days because that way we're completely done by the next scrap chat or craft chat, uh, just in case we want to have some other contest or something. You never know. So here we go. We're going to pick the next winner. Do, 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 do. Ba, ba, da, ba. I feel like it. Do. Linny Daniels. Congratulations to Linny Daniels. This is fun, isn't it? Um, all right. I love Sunny's public service announcements. We never get a chance to see Holly. Oh, Holly does appear in my dried flowers video and he makes a, um, he's got a, uh, a posting on my community tab in my uh, chair. Um, in my uh, YouTube channel, so check that out on my homepage. And uh, he, I think he does show up in a couple of the videos, but it's like scant because I have to completely move my, my camera apparatus because I'm all set up in the dining room and he's in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so there you go. All right, next. The next winner is, this will be number three. Who's it gonna be? <gasps> Elizabeth Freeman, there you go, Elizabeth. Freeman. So just again, be sure to email me. I won the contest and give me your address. And I have ways to knowing that it's really you or not. So um, uh, there you go. Uh, here we go. And number four, will it be you? <laughs> okay, this is this is fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, waste some time with Maggie. Okay, now you just got to love that name. All right, we're going to oh, waste some time with Maggie. Some time with Maggie, Maggie I.E. Okay, I got to waste some time with Maggie. I love your names. She says, lovely hanging with you. I love your snippy buttonized paper clips. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you got it, Maggie. Coming your way with a pile of fun-filled scraps for you. All right, congratulations. And we are number five already. Look at that, here we go. Whee! who's it gonna be? Who's it? Elvan, Elvan. I don't know if my comment went through. I can't see it, but maybe there's a delay. But I was asking about the strength of the coffee to make the coffee died. Uh, love your videos. Uh, congrats to all the winner. The um, congratulations, Alvan. Um, coffee dying. I, totally. I would say in um, like a. Oh, I'm trying to think of. Okay. Maybe a a liter of water. I might put a quarter a cup of coffee instant crystals. That's a good gauge to start with. And then you can always go lighter or darker depending on what your preference is because it always comes out different. Even if you dip each individual page at a time or you soak the stack, you're gonna find different pages pull, pick up the dye differently. I don't know whether it has to do with gravity or pull or capillary action or what the deal is, um, but they're always all different. Yeah, and you can also try your regular coffee. Like let's say you made a pot and um, you just have some left over, you can use that as well. It's gonna give you a softer color. If you use tea, generally you'll get even a softer color unless you throw a, 
you know, a ton of tea bags in there. But um, uh, yeah, so you can control it. I would say experimentation is your best friend, but that's a good place to start. All right, here we go. Uh, that is number five. We've got six and seven. We've got two more. Is it going to be you? Is it going to be you? Here we go. And here we go, here we go, here, oh yeah, oh, Christine Sturkey, congratulations. Christine Sturkey has won the scrap contest. Let me just write your name down here. Okay, I have you logged, Christine. Tuning in every morning to see what's going on at the outpost. My family probably thinks I'm loopy. Oh, my family thinks I'm loopy too, Christine, so you're in good company. I'll be sitting here making something completely different than you are, but I've got one of your videos on anyway. Uh, that is very kind of very sweet. And uh, I totally get that because you know what? As long as you're having fun, that's all that matters, right? There you go. Okay, and number seven. Here we are. The big last one is... Lynn Sykes, there you go. Congratulations. Pam, you have made me addicted. I just cannot get enough of your videos. I just wanted to ask you to show us a picture of Holly. She's usually quite vocal and I'd like to put a face to the squawk. Well, I guess that's two for seven, so I better get Holly's face on there soon, huh? Okay, I get the message, I get the message. No, Holly is a very important uh, part of our lives here. And, uh, uh, well, we'll just have to get him on camera. It may take a little uh, peanut bribe, but I think we can get him there. Okay, hold on. Let me just switch the screen. Okay, here we are back to normal stuff. So congratulations to all the winners. I'm just going to write this so you guys can see it. If you're wondering where at the paper, there's no space there. The, I can't spell, paperoutpost.com. Yeah. That was a P. Oh, that, that was real clear. That was great. Okay. But anyway, it's Pam at the paperoutpost.com. And you guys are smart. You can figure that out. And uh, okay. So there we have. Congratulations. Uh, seven winners and seven scraps from a lot of reckless abandon. That's all I can say. Are, they are on their way, probably in tomorrow's mail. They're already all packaged and ready to ship. So there you go. Now, um, so make sure you've got six days to contact me. And uh, so uh, just don't uh, do it before next Friday. That's, that's the kicker. And I'm just going to do some fussy cutting here. And we're just going to jump into some good old fashioned craft chat here. And uh, craft chat is basically me answering your crafty questions. Um, let me back up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put you here for the big excitement of me, me cutting, me uh, doing some uh, fussy cutting here. Well, I don't know if this is actually fussy cutting, but this is cutting cutting of the digi kits and I just wanted to get some of these cut up so that they're ready to go and look at that I'm creating more scraps maybe maybe I'll make something from those before the video is done wouldn't that be awesome I'd be so ahead of the game but I just want you to know that I'm not completely without scraps okay can we just be dirt honest here I have my steamer trunk here which is still full I pull from it all the time and I but at least I have contain the beast you know what I mean it was there was there was scrap overflow major scrap overflow but I figured you know what let's get it into the hands of people who can have fun with it because you know somebody said there's something about other people's scraps that are just so fascinating and um, there you go I have released my scraps to the universe have fun go forth and play create with reckless abandon everybody and um, there you are okay so now we're just making more scraps here uh, first question comes from Sheila Munoz and she asks uh, she's referring to the got a 12 by 12 scrapbook paper video that just came out uh, what a lovely idea always love your videos and craft chats I don't want to spam this question but would you consider showing how you store and organize your scraps well what I do is I put them in a box and I ship them to other people that is my latest strategy <laughs> because <laughs> um, I, I have in the past I've done it by um, uh, let's see I've done it by a size color and type and I have found that the most effective was actually um, size and and or color I, I, I go back and forth I tell you it's true I would make a little handmade envelopes possibly from uh, cardstock or from um, junk mail and I would just make these giant envelopes where I could put a lot of similar things like things that are like <laughs> each other and uh, see something like this I'll just leave it as is because I don't know exactly where I'm going to cut it in here or I could use it as a belly band so that's just kind of some options I'm giving myself there um, and 
Yeah, that's a big question. Okay, she saw, I saw one video where you pulled out your long pieces of scrap folder and I was intrigued. Oh yeah, I had a, a category called longs because sometimes you need a long, you know what I mean? Like maybe you're making a bookmark. I would consider this a long, you know, or maybe you have a piece of, oh, I wanted to show you these few things too. Let me show you these. These are cute. Okay, this is a uh, you know, they didn't mince words. I just think this is so funny because they were so blunt, you know, and, and I don't know if you'd ever get away with this today, but this is like the advertisement. Fat legs? Yeah. Slenderized legs for free. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that awesome? You can go from that to that. Hey, what's holding you back? It's a limited time offer. <laughs> um, so anyway, I just thought that was so funny. The things they used to say on these old magazines, just, just very funny. Somebody gave me these work basket look, magazines. Thank you very much. These were wonderful. I absolutely adore those. I love them. And this is a birthday greeting from back in the day. Is it written on? Yeah, a little bit. 1910. Uh, birthday greetings. Boy, they, they thought deeply. Let's, let's take the title on the card and use up most of the space there. Okay. From your friend, Ruhan. Could be something. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, it was going to Miss Frances Smith, um, Monroeville, Indiana, route number one. I mean, I love the addresses back then. They were so simplistic. It's just like, uh, Joe, um, on the th corner, three doors down. Yeah. Like somewhere in Kalamazoo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they just, somehow the people found it. Maybe, maybe these actually didn't go to the people's homes. Does anybody know about this? Maybe they were stored at the post office and the person had to come in and say, hey, is there any mail for me? Oh yes, we have this. We already know what it, who it's from. It's from Ruhan. And he didn't really write much because back then it was very common to mail postcards as opposed to a greeting card for a, a birthday greeting. Uh, it was less expensive, but I'm the, look at the beauty of that. Yeah, that's gorgeous, isn't it? It's like one of my favorite cards. So I just, I, I just loved it. Oh, does it say? Oh, okay. No, I don't know. Okay. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Um, and then of course I found this one. Okay. So from a little later on, this is probably like sixties, I would imagine. Does that remind you of anybody, you know, anybody, anybody? I know, right? How cute. And, uh, Packy, Bob and John. Yep. There you go. <laughs> oh, Snuffles. Snuffles is here. Yes. Yes. He is here. Do you want to say something? If I move the video camera, I'm probably going to accidentally turn it off, but this is such a cute little position. He's like, I'm going to try. Hold on. Sun bun. Hi. You want to say hi to everybody? Oh, hey everybody. I'm on already. I had no idea. I didn't brush my hair. I'm, I'm, I'm going back to sleep now. Oh wait, I'm awake. No, no, I'm not. Okay. See you next. See you. See you a little later. Bye. Yep. That's my boy. Okay. <laughs> you just hanging out with mom today, taking it easy, having fun. Okay. So let me, let's trim these up a little bit. All right. Okay, so our next question today is going to be, see, I didn't make you wait till the bitter end to find out the winners. No, no, I figured just let the fun roll and uh, see where it goes from here. Okay. Um, Jen Dotson said, um, oh, this is a good one. I actually pre-read this and I thought it was so valuable. I, I wanted to share it. She said, um, Jen Dotson on the Got 12 by 12 scrapbook paper video. She had a suggestion, which I thought was very good. Uh, great stuff as always, Pam. Got a tip for you. And I love tips, by the way. Feel free to share your tips. We all need tips. Um, I know how much you hate measuring. Just want to get down to business of crafting, right? You can not only eliminate one of the folds for your spine, you can also eliminate the pre-scoring you did with the tool. All you have to do are two folds and you have a centered spine. Ready? First fold. When you are ready to fold in half, just fold so that the leading edge of the two sides, instead of meeting in the middle to find the center, are the distance apart that you want your spine to be in width. Example, when folded, the leading edge of the front cover should be one quarter from the leading edge of the back cover if you want a quarter inch spine. Um, second fold, repeat with the same distance um, back to front. Voila, no middle fold and trying to figure out if you place them right since the leading edges are the same distance from each other um, for either edge of the spine fold. They will meet in the center when the spine is perpendicular. I love that idea, I think it's very creative. I'm just, I'm thinking on the math here. Maybe if you want a quarter inch spine, maybe one eighth and one eighth would give you a total of one quarter. 
I don't know, I could be wrong. Math's not my strong point, but the concept totally rocks. I love it. Thank you for sharing that, Jen. And we carry on. Uh, Tamara, oh, I guess we just leave you as is. And we leave you as is. We're going to back up a little bit, kind of close. Okay. And we have you, we could cut you up. And um, I think these are from Precious Flowers, if anybody was curious. Okay, so just prepping these for some future uh, journal projects coming. Yeah, just never know what's coming. Um, I like to have a bunch of these cut up and ready to go. So you could just grab and go, that always makes it easy. Uh, the next question, let me see if I can walk and chew gum at the same time here, okay, is, are the stickles the same as liquid pearls? Um, uh, okay, in, in my world, no. Stickles means glitter glue. And liquid pearls means solid, more opaque, shiny, kind of me metallic looking, very pretty stuff. Stickles takes a lot longer to dry for me. Liquid pearls and Nouveau drops dry pretty fast. Um, but they give you completely different looks. Everything gives you a different look. Actually, I mean, I would put liquid pearls and Nouveau drops in the same bucket. It takes forever to use up a liquid pearls bottle. They're small and it takes forever, ever, ever to use up a bottle of Nouveau drops because they're bigger. I, th I, I think they're probably close in price point. I think maybe if you're just going like per milliliter, it's probably a better deal to buy the Nouveau drops. Both products are great. Some people like to work with little bottles. Some people like to work with big bottles. And um, so if you like the little bottles, go for the uh, liquid pearls. If you like the big bottles, go for the Nouveau drops. They come in so many cool colors. I mean, it's just like candy. You could be there forever um, collecting them and it's wonderful. And um, sometimes if you have them for a long time, they can dry out a little bit. But if you just use a little pin at the top to poke a hole, um, you can usually get things flowing pretty easily, relatively quickly. And I tend to go through my metallics very fast, um, my coppers and golds and antique bronzes, um, things like that. And then the other colors, you know, just depends on what you like to use a lot. But uh, yeah, that's kind of my, my all about that stuff. Those are kind of pretty. I'll just leave them as is. Well, no, cut them up. Cut them up, Pam. Cut them up. Okay, you're right. Um, okay, then we have... Uh, um, Jeanette Maddox asks, green beans and swimming lessons. Oh, she's talking about Sonny. <laughs> uh, Sonny is my little uh, Maltese puppy. Well, he's officially two years old now. Um, he was officially two on July 9th, by the way. Uh, yep. And uh, we have a, had a big celebration. And uh, now we got to take him to the VET to get checked out because he's uh, T-W-O. <laughs> okay. Um, Green beans and swimming lessons, she says. What more could you ask for? The companion journal is a perfect idea. Um, the, okay, she's referring to the God of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper video. And she says the recipient can play in the journal and trade out ephemera pieces. Love it. Yes, there's a lot of um, possibilities added to a junk journal when you give them something to play with too. And sometimes people feel that when it's something is in a junk journal that it should not be moved or touched or it can only be treasured. But if you give them a little companion piece, it almost gives them permission. Yeah, they get, there's like the sense of this is for you to play with. And there you go. Because sometimes people um, uh, feel very intimidated when you give them an art gift. They're afraid to touch it or muck it up. They just feel like it's a hands-off thing. And, um, and sometimes it can be like, maybe you get something from, you know, grandma Anna and you want to like never touch it or change it because she made it. But there are others that are meant for people to explore and have fun and play in and, um, doodle in, write in, um, what have you not. So I would say if you're giving it as a gift, maybe let the person know what your intention was. Like, this is something I made for you to play in, or this is something I wanted to show you how, uh, what you can make if you like to play with paper, and maybe you'll be inspired to do something like this one day. And maybe here's a little companion thing that you could uh, start to play with on the paper. So you can play with them in this journal, or you can even make your own journal. And uh, 
I hear a lot of wonderful, heartwarming stories about how um, different generations are getting together and making junk journals because there are so many, um, it's just such an amazing thing to make a book. And when you see the twinkle in somebody's eye when they have discovered the process of making a book and that it doesn't have to be so hard and there's so many ways they can do it. And, um, you know, they're only, there is no limit. Their imagination is forever overfloweth. So, um, yeah, they're just, it's really neat to see. So there's a lot of families um, and a lot of solos out there making journals for all sorts of purposes. I mean, sometimes we're making them for um, recipes, gathering old recipes from our family or our own favorite recipes that we've gathered along the way. Or maybe we're making up new recipes, um, stuff like that. So there are um, so many ways you can share this with your family, with your friends, with yourself. Um, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good, good, clean fun. Maybe we need more of that, huh? Good, good clean fun. Okay, here we go. Um, Morning Glory 576. I really probably should read these before I uh, do them, but I just kind of think it's more exciting if we just go in cold and blind and see what happens. I'm willing to take it all. Here we go. Morning Glory 576 asks on the got a 12 by 12 scrapbook paper video, make a little companion for your junk journal. Um, I love this. I'm making a junk journal for my daughter and was wondering how to gift her some ephemera. How do you come up with all these wonderful ideas? Um, lots of pressure. <laughs> um, I love to think about paper and uh, play. I play with paper in my head a lot before it actually becomes a tangible thing. And uh, I just find that a fun, relaxing process. And then I grab some and I start folding it or cutting it or doing something with it that um, I had rolling around in my head. And it can be the most bizarre thing that, that where the inspiration comes from. You know, it's, it's not always, a, um, it's, it's rarely ever a big, long, drawn out, researched thought process. It's often walking by, hearing something on the video, a YouTube um, uh, you know, a, a Pinterest, or maybe I'm in a thrift store and I'm looking at some old things and they, they just make me think, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we, and then there you go. That just starts like that, you know, and it's, uh, it's, um, I don't know, it's just, and oh, and then there's the, uh, the classic, you know, falling asleep at night. That's when the wheels really turn. They just start turning over and over, folding paper, uh, trying things, adding things. It's very easy because you can't really make a mistake while you're going to sleep because you don't really ruin the paper in your mind. You just sort of explore with it. So, you know, I, I think about different concepts. You know, I think about envelopes. I think about booklets and portfolios and uh, junk journals and uh, planners and you name it. I mean, whatever it is, I'll just start rolling it through the head and, and uh, just thinking about different things. It's a lot more fun than, you know, thinking about the news. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. All right. Now let's go to the next question. Old Anu. I just love these names people come up with. Old Anu asks, um, same video, got a 12 by 12. I need to I make sure I'm, I'm harding these because that way I know that I have answered them here. And I'm trying to remember to put a little note that says I answered your question on um, in the craft chat. Okay. There we go. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. Maureen Cooper says, I'm wondering if you have any suggestions about a junk journal for a rock star. Oh, you mean like uh, like honoring one rock star or she knows a rock star and she'd like to give him one. Well, let's find out. I would like to make a junk journal for a blues mu musician who was most active in the 60s and 70s. I don't know him personally. Oh, well, here we go. This is getting interesting. But I would like to do something kind of out there to show my appreciation for the years of enjoyment that he has provided for my soul. Um, I know this is a weird question and so am I. Actually, this is Maureen Cooper um, and I, I love your weirdness because I think that's an awesome idea. And the first thing that just popped into my mind was, um, uh, you know, maybe if you could have, uh, you could show him how it uh, affected you. Like maybe there were certain songs with certain words and maybe you could have, you know, pictures uh, of something that is familiar to you, like maybe your dog or, or I don't know, like your rose garden or something like that, or maybe something that was going on in your life, like maybe you and a candle or something, you know, I don't know, but uh, maybe how he affected you um, to kind of give him the impact of what a difference it made in your life. And, and I think that's kind of a cool way to let somebody know what a difference they made um, in your world. 
uh, where they could actually see the difference, you know, the, the feelings and um, the emotions that were evoked. And if you don't actually have pictures of that time, it was a long time ago and those pictures are gone, uh, you could either um, use inspirations from um, magazines or postcards or um, you could actually draw things or collage things. Oh, Sunny's on the alert. What's going on? Is there somebody at the door? There's nobody at the door. I can see every, I can see everybody who comes to the front door from here. That's right. And there's nobody there. It's all right. It's okay. I think he thought Papa was coming in the door. Oh, that happens. Sometimes he gets all excited. Okay. Um, so the next question we have is Athena Cards and More. She asks for the Got uh, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper video. Um, she asks... Love this idea. It would even make cute little storage folder. What breed is Sonny? How old? He's adorable. He's a Maltese and he's two. Thank you. And uh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, you could make the um, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper companions thicker, hardier, sturdier. I was thinking you could reinforce the front and back covers with chipboard or something like that if you wanted to have it... Um, something a little sturdier to last for a long period of time um, and hold more stuff. So if you want to do something like that, that could easily be done. <clears throat> All righty. And then we have Kelly Lee, who says, on the same video, but mind you, uh, great idea, Pam. I love your little haircut, Sunny. Does mommy leave your tail fluffy? Um, mommy prefers a skinny tail and Papa prefers a fluffy tail. So sometimes it just depends who takes them to the groomer. Yeah. Um, Papa likes fluffy puppy <laughs> and Mama likes trim down um, like summer cut so that uh, I, I see I know that Sonny's it's not Sonny's favorite thing to go to the spa so I try and minimize the trips where uh, my hubby would like to just see like him with the you know quintessential perfect little Maltese puppy cut all the time but you'd have to take them all the time and I just don't want to put them through all that you know I just I just want them to be a dog and to have fun and roll around and you know so I trim them about four three four times a year and just bring them down to uh what I call the number two blade it's this not super shaved but it's like the next one up so he's 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 got you know it's short hair but it's 105 in degree heat index right now here in Florida so it's okay you know and like we, I've told you, we're working on our swimming lessons. He's three quarters of the way into the deep end now. I, I, I like put him in three quarters of the way and he's successfully making it out. And he's looking so much stronger on his swimming. I should really do a video of it. But um, uh, it's, uh, sometimes I do it when, when my husband's not here. So I can't, I can't video and watch Sonny and make sure he makes it out okay. Because I have to maybe run to the other side if he's not going to quite make it. But he's the last like... <clears throat> 10 times he's much stronger he knows where he's going he sees the mark on this pool steps to head towards that and um, he's not as scared it's more like okay she's going to do this to me three times and then we're done and then I have this weird shower thing to get all the chlorine off and uh, I could I could have arranged these better so they were easier to cut my apologies see I, I learn I learn the evils of my ways when I when I actually end up trimming these up so there you go this is from the roses one. And uh, I gotta get in here and hand cut these because I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but there, that's not so bad. Um, I don't mind leaving the white myself because sometimes when you enhance it with the brown, it gives it a nice little frame. So if you're doing one of these maneuvers, you know, and you're just vintaging, distressing, um, giving it some old world look, yeah, it just gives that nice little border with the white frame. So you can trim it right to the edge of the picture or leave a little bit of white border. It's totally up to you. Yeah. And, um, okay, next question. Uh, um, Christine Crow says, uh, oh, this is a different video. This is how to make pretty pockets in a junk journal. Episode 10 of Pretty Pages in a Junk Journal. Okay. Pam, is each fundle different or are they all the same? Please Thank you for your pockets. Great question. I've been asked about this a lot lately. Okay, so um, I have categories that I look for when I'm making fundals. And if you don't know what a fundal is, it's a collection of old and interesting papers. Um, fun things to make junk journals with. Basically, that's it. If you're a historian or collector, it's interesting. If you just like the feel of different kinds of paper, it's interesting. If you like the variety of being able to have a lot of possibilities in one moment, or maybe you want to sit down and 
understand what you like to play with. Maybe you haven't experienced a lot of these different papers, but if you actually had them in your hands, you could say, oh, I gravitate towards this or towards that. So the next time you're out and about, you can look for more of this or that. And uh, so there's, um, I try and put a big variety in there. You get over a hundred pieces, but basically, um, uh, it's always different because my stock is different. My categories, um, they're generally the same. I may modify a category here and there depending on if I, if I think, oh, this would be much better than that category, then I might alter it a little bit. But uh, basically, um, it, you're always going to get some antique vin or uh, vintage le ledger. Uh, which is uh, very interesting. You get to see what people bought or, who, you know, old lodge records, things like that. Just very interesting uh, stuff. And old checks and old receipts. You got to see what people bought and how much things were, the pricing. Old postcards, and many of them were gorgeous. There's a music category, beautiful old music pages. Um, there's um, some newspaper, some old newspaper. Uh, for different feels, different textures, different advertisements, a lot um, of magazines, foreign, um, uh, foreign language books, um, small books, big books. I'm trying to run down the list in my head. I've looked at it a million times. Um, let's see. Dictionary, beautiful dictionary pages. Some, a lot of that gothic writing. That's just so beautiful. I love that when I come across that. And... Um, um, let's see what else we have science, we have nature. Um, so, uh, the, the actual pages are going to be different unless it's something from a very large book and I'm pulling from it for a long time, you might get a duplicate, but odds are it's going to be different every time. Um, because, uh, you know, I just, I pull from many different sources and, but I do go in categories. So I try and uncover those, but they're the popular categories, I would say, you know, vintage, birds, um, you know, Victorian, those kinds of themes. Um, uh, but Braille paper, um, Atlas, map, um, I think what else is in there? Uh, uh, I have a category called unique because I have many items that do not fall into any other category, but I think they're so cool and worthy to be um, experienced by somebody else. I make sure to add a collection of uniques to every um, uh, collection that just doesn't fit in any other, other category. And um, yeah, so there you go. I hope that helps. Oh, let's see. Let's maybe do one more here. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, okay, Cindy Zamora said, K Valdez means where are you going? It was also a movie uh, that was related to the video called How to Make a Mini Ephemera Holder from Scraps for a Junk Journal. And um, Yes, I had a book, a very old book called K. Valdez, and it had beautiful writing in it. I think it was French uh, writing in it, and I, I think I was battling about whether to, you know, open it up or, you know, gut it and all of that, but I think I did. <laughs> I think I did. I usually, I usually do eventually, um, and I just freed the pages and off they went to the universe. Um, but yeah, I think that's what, um, that, well, thank you for that little bit of research there and history on that because I didn't know it was a movie. How interesting. See, there's so many things you have to learn along the way. Um, you know, who else doesn't, you know, love the odd things that are tucked in books? I mean, when you are collecting books, old books, new books, doesn't matter. But if they've been in anybody else's hands, odds are somewhere along the way, somebody tucked something in there. So often you'll get bonus items. You'll get bonus letters. You'll get bonus um, dried flowers. You'll get a bonus, oh, my bookmarks. I mean, all sorts of fun things can be in there. And um, you just never know what you're going to come across in a book. I mean, I think one of the weirdest things I ever did come across was a collection of um, dried butterflies. Somebody had collected butterflies. I'm hoping they were not alive when these books were closed, but it didn't see squash marks. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, a, you know, now I didn't see that. They look, maybe they died somewhere and somebody picked them up and collected them, but there must, I don't know how many, maybe 10 in, in one big heavy book. And they were very beautiful. I still have them. Not quite sure what to do with them, but, um, uh, yeah. So you just never know what you're going to find in a book. Recipes, photographs, um, you know, go into an old bookstore and just kind of poke around in the book. Give the book a shake. You're going to find some interesting things fall out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little secret love letters and stuff like that. It's all in there. There you go.
Um, okay, so I think we'll wrap it up here. So uh, just a quick na list names again of the winners. All uh, right, right we have. Oh, closer, closer. Uh, Zendria Foxclaw, Linny Daniels, Elizabeth Freeman, Waste Some Time with Maggie, Elvan, Christine Sturkey, and Lynn Sykes. Congratulations. Remember to email me where to mail your scrappy scraps to, and I'll be happy to get those in the mail to you. Congratulations to all our winners and everybody else. Thanks for hanging out. And you never know, maybe we'll do some more contests in the future. Have a fun. I'll see you else what I can gather around here and release to the universe. That might be fun. Um, so take care. Have an awesome time. Um, for everybody who's new, welcome. Everybody who's been here, you guys are awesome. And um, thank you so much uh, for all your support and encouragement along the way. You guys uh, make it and keep it fun for me, and I really appreciate that. And uh, um, I kind of love knowing that we're all sort of crafting together, even if we're doing different things or the same things or we're just... You know, you're over here, and no, I'm over here, and you're over there, and we're just playing with paper. I don't know, there's something unifying about that. It just it just feels good. It makes me feel not so alone. And um, so thank you for um, this beautiful community. And uh, if you have not signed up for my free monthly emailed newsletter, you might want to give that a go because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it, a checklist of supplies uh, to keep your eyes open for with junk journals, and uh, junk journal supplies, and also um, a list of page ideas in case you run out of ideas. I'll keep you swimming in ideas, I promise. Um, there's also a little companion playlist for those page list of ideas, so you can see them made in four different ways to use in your junk journals, and just keep the ideas flowing. And I'd love to hear your ideas too, if you want to add more ideas or make suggestions, things like that. I'm all ears. And uh, um, what else we have? We have uh, my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, lately, I've been doing my craft chats on Fridays, answering your crafty questions, and uh, just playing and having fun. Sometimes just doing some fussy cutting, and other times making little somethings, or um, who knows, we're just, we're, we really have no rules on this day. We're just sort of here hanging, having fun, and uh, mass making something, possibly. Uh, love it if you join me. Love it if you just hang out, and... Uh, um, no pressure, all easy time. And um, in my Etsy shop, when I have journals done, I sell them in there. When I have journal bundles done, I sell them in there. And um, um, I have th that's where you find the fundals, and that's also where you find the uh, vintage digi kits, which are computer files which you purchase, um, download, and save onto your computer. And they're always eternally saved for you on Etsy once you buy them. You can print them out and download them as many times as you like or download and print them, whichever order makes more sense. <laughs> and, um, um, and if you don't have a printer or you don't like to print, um, I have, I'm, I'm not going to call it a service anymore because I think I'm confusing people. It's a, um, <clears throat> what you can do is for one flat fee, I will, per I will print out 10 digi kits for you. And um, they're printed on this lightweight cardstock, which is this stuff. This is lightweight cardstock that I use, 110 pound weight cardstock. And uh, I ship those off to you, priority mail shipping included, so you get them quickly. And you can start playing right away. All I need from you is a list of 10 DigiKit names, or you can say surprise me, or these are the categories that I like. I like birds and Victorian, etc. And uh, just send me that, and then I'll know what to send you, okay? And uh, so all you really, you don't need to buy the individual DigiKits. Yeah, you don't need to buy all the computer files. All you need to do is send me the names. I only need the first two or three words, and I'll know what you're talking about. Um, what else? Let's see. I have a podcast on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all new material, audio. And then on the rest of the days, I'm sprinkling in some video podcasts. And you can either listen to those anywhere you listen to podcasts, or you can watch the video on Spotify. And what else? I have an Amazon shop um, where if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies that you see me commonly use here on the, the show, I will uh, the show <laughs> um, on this channel. Um, I try and put a link in those on Amazon for you to find them. It's an affiliate link. That means I make a small commission, but um, you don't pay more for the product. And what else? Let's see. 
Um, I have a merchandise shop. Hey, if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon and you would like a lovely little gift for yourself or for a friend with that on it, you can get a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a toad, a mug. And um, I believe that is open almost worldwide. Um, the company does ship everywhere except for a few countries. So if you want to check to see if your country is included, they can ship anywhere. So I think that's kind of cool. That opens it up where most of the stuff, unfortunately, like my journals and that, I generally only ship locally because, uh, uh, or in uh, the U.S., just because of customs and issues. And you, sometimes there's plant products or coffee and stuff and, and, and it doesn't always um, fly with different customs in different areas. So um, uh, it just makes it easier. And um, so that is pretty much it. All my links are down below. You can find me on Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun doing weekly and monthly challenges. Right now we're doing the one, two, three, go challenge where I give you three prompts go and then you make whatever you like with it and then uh, people love to post what they make from it and it's amazing the variety and and it's uh, it's just uh, it's sensational honestly to see the different things that people come up with with three different prompts and uh, so hats off uh, to everybody who's been posting thank you and you're just a wealth full of ideas for all of us out here um, so thank you very much and from all of us to all of you, just remember that fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Boy, you're a lot, you're a lot lighter <laughs> than the original. Okay, everybody. I think we'll hang on to the original, though. All right, everybody. Take care. Have an awesome papery day. Have fun. Take care. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.